Just got back from a ride on this Bafang G510 motor powered bike. Got the uh, 29 inch wheels, tubeless, 2.4 inch tires, rock shocks, drop post, 52 volt, 14 amp hour battery, Bafang Ultra. Rock shocks, pike on the front, 140 travel. Uh, gonna upgrade the brakes here pretty soon, but I got the SRAM levels on it right now. Probably put on the Magura's Deity stem. Uh, carbon bar, I forget what brand. And whew, grips. It's a 180, I mean 780 millimeter bar. A little bit of rise. Got the SRAM 11 speed, I think NX with 10 to 42 tooth sprocket and the stock the fang chain ring. Pretty minimalistic. Yeah, just mini light on the front. Mini light on the back. 203 rotors in the front. 180 on the back. It's uh, torque and cadence sensing, but it also does have the throttle, thumb throttle. The thumb throttle on the left. Drop a post on the right. One by drivetrain. Handles really nice. It was the this frame was the only frame I could find with the G510 motor that had the shortest chain stays. I think they're 460. Could be a little bit longer, 464 or something. But it has decently uh, modern geometry. The front head tube is, I believe, a 67 head angle. It's a little long. I prefer it to be a little shorter than that, but uh, it still works. I didn't have to I cut the... Luckily, I cut the fork correctly. Actually, the fork didn't need to be cut when I got it, so... Someone had cut it uh, previously. Got the Cane Creek 40 headset. Feels really well, nice. Turn the stiff, good. Just took it on a pretty fast ride today. Tops out around 35. But with you having it on the I never put it in level 5 really, I just put it in 4. 5 just seems a little too much power. That doesn't seem right for some people, but I like to have some pedal feedback when I'm pedaling. It feels like I'm actually pedaling, not just kind of spinning the cranks. But 4 feels real good. It's really powerful. So 4 you can go up a steep hill. And uh, steep, real steep hill, and your legs start burning, but you can just power up like ridiculously steep hills. I'll put a video of that at some point. You can see this frame was built to accommodate a bigger battery than this high long style pack, but I just put this one on because it was a little bit lighter. Uh, it's the 14 amp hour. 52 volt and I <clears throat> use the XT90s in there um, everything's mostly routed except for this outside rear brake cable I'd like to do something with that but when I get the new brakes I'm gonna get the Magura brakes and then I'll route it through this side over here I also have a cord coming out for the um, front headlight this also does have a shift detector on it, 
So I put that on there and it's really kind of necessary on this bike because there's so much torque going through that chain that uh, when you shift you don't want to be having that torque going through the shifter. I mean that torque going through the chain and through the, your drivetrain. You could probably bust off a couple of teeth doing that. Um, I did put on a SRAM uh, shoot SRAM Eagle chain. I forget which one. It was the second second lowest, but nicer than the lowest SRAM Eagle chain. It was the only one with the hundred and forty links, I believe, and I did not remove any links. This, you know, having a one by this chain actually ended up being really big and. I could have even used two more links, but I, I didn't. I just left it on there, and so that's why you see that this clutch or whatever the derailleur is kind of far forward when it's on the biggest cog. But um, it works. I haven't had any problems with it, and I'm not seeing any excessive wear. This was actually an already used rear sprocket, so not all this has been done from me in this torque but it's uh it's definitely good to put it on a really strong or i mean just get the best chain you can really brand new chain i'm actually going to replace this sprocket pretty soon i have a sram gx uh, 11 that i'm going to put on there and it will also be like the, uh, this one's a regular um, cassette where the SRAM GX will be a XT driver. And I already have the XT driver to go on with these Spank Uzi rims. They're tubeless. I put a little extra fluid in there because I'm not really worried about weight. This bike isn't, it's extremely heavy, but it's not as heavy as a hub motor bike. I had a hub motor bike where the whole rear wheel is metal pretty much, and when you lift it up, it's very unbalanced. This one actually is pretty well balanced when you pick it up. It, uh, right in the middle, it stays just about how a normal mountain bike was other than being crazy heavy but I can still bunny hop this pretty easily when I see a curb I can get over a curb without having to tag the back wheel um, but it's not an XC bike that's for sure it's probably heavier it's about the maybe yeah it's probably heavier than the old school downhill bikes from the early 2000s but yeah, these shocks, this is the first time I've ever had a Rock Shocks Pike and I have had Fox Factory 100 millimeter forks before, which were awesome. And I know Fox is probably the best or one of the best, but these having the 140 travel on these Rock Shocks Pike, I never experienced this amount of suppleness and just great handling. It'd be nice if it was a full suspension, but full suspensions, you get the longer rear chain stays, and then uh, you just have a little more weight. And this it has so much torque, it's kind of nice to have it be at a hardtail. And I've always liked hardtails anyway, so it's just, uh, I feel like it's a pretty good looking bike for being a China frame. And there's nothing wrong with China frames. I feel like most stuff is made in China. You're going to get the $7,000, $8,000 e-bikes that might be made up in Seattle or wherever uh, Trek is. But, um, you know, for a China frame, this is a pretty darn good looking, nice geometry frame. think much else I'd like to put some different cranks on and then put a different front 
chain ring on and get that chain ring guide or uh, bash guard off of there because I mean if you look at this that spider I think that's what you call it in the middle the thing is so heavy it's crazy like I'm not really too worried about weight on this thing but it's so heavy it's just kind of ridiculous that I feel like just some different cranks and different chain ring that could shed off like two pounds or something so maybe do that um, I'm gonna keep the single piston or er, dual si single piston in the back and or no dual piston in the back and then when I get the Maguras I'm gonna get the quad piston in the front and keep the 203 in the front Magura comes has really thick rotors I might get one of those but I'll just leave this one this is just some random one that I got from a bike shop I'll leave the 203 on it feel if it's good and then if not maybe I'll upgrade it's a $30 rotor from Magura which is two millimeters thick so it's you know coming from their uh, thought process of bigger is better Oh, uh, the front spacing here is uh, 110 boost. These rims were not, these wheels were not boost, or the hubs were not boost. Um, so there's an adapter on that. The rear dropout on this is uh, 142. It's not 148, so it's 142. So I didn't need an adapter on the rear, but I needed an adapter on the front. Um, it is a through axle. Just that little thing there, derailleur is part of the whole thing that comes up. Is that loose? I'm gonna have to... Oh shit, that's loose. Ooh, okay, I'm gonna put that screw back in there. Anyway, it's getting dark. Awesome ride tonight. The 52 volt battery really, um, I mean the 14 amp hour battery, this isn't like some badass battery. This is straight off the of eBay. I don't know, unit pack power. I don't know what cells they use. I think they might just be generic brand cells. It doesn't feel like it lasts for that long. Um, it's, I think a 30, uh, 30 amp BMS in there, whatever. I think it's 30 amps, rated 30 amps. I kind of forget how you say that, but um, I am getting about 10 miles on a ride, and that's not that far. Um, when I had my hub motor, I could go probably 30 miles and still have a charge at the end. This is 10 miles, and I, it's fine at the end of the 10 miles, but if I try to use the throttle, throttle pretty much is easy to just the quickest way to go full power on this motor and if I use the throttle it'll start cutting out after 10 miles so um, it doesn't cut out when I'm pedaling the torque it, it puts through with the amount of pedal that I do it still just it feels fine it doesn't I don't even notice a difference but I notice when I'm using the um, th thumb throttle it really does uh, just start to cut out so battery could be bigger considering a Luna um, higher quality battery but you know after 10 miles I'm pretty sweaty anyway just and that's 10 miles of like um, really heavy use on this I'm doing a lot of uphill stuff a lot of technical climbs um, this isn't quite a downhill bike, but I kind of ride it fast down the hills, and then I ride up steep hills, all dirt, really dirt, loose rock, and so it's really, you know, putting a lot of power through that motor. So it's not just, I mean, I could get way more than 10 miles if I was just on the street riding on normal hills, but, um, you know, this is, it's pretty much perfect. I just have to charge it every time. I can't go multiple days with it. That's about it. Just need to change the brakes and then I'll probably change the saddle too. This is off another bike. Not bad, but I'll probably change that at some point.